Hey, welcome to the expressions portion of the After Effects basic training series. What we're gonna be covering in this tutorial is molecular dynamics, thermal energy mechanisms, and possibly some photon scattering quadratic paranormal anomalies. Okay, that didn't really make any sense. I apologize. What we're really gonna be doing is taking a look at expressions, which is the scripting language in After Effects. Now, I'm gonna to try to show you some practical examples, but expressions can be endless. There's so many different variables involved in expressions that I just wanna kinda of touch on it and kinda of show you what it's all about. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna take this footage of Tino, drag it out to the composition area, create a new composition. Now, I'm gonna add one of my favorite expressions to this clip. And to do that, we're gonna to toggle down to the transform property of the position. Now, to add an expression to a value, what you're gonna do is Alt-click onto the stopwatch for most any parameter. This brings up this little input box where you can type a message. It also has a default value in most cases, and there's also some other buttons here that we'll get into in a bit. Now, transform.position, that basically is referring to itself. It's saying, use the value of itself. So that's the default, but we are going to delete that. So I'm going to hit backspace and we're going to type an expression. Now there's a bunch of expressions out there. Um, a lot of them you can find inside of here, but they may not make sense exactly. But the truth is you may not understand exactly what they're referring to. You want to research that once you get into it a little bit more. Now I happen to know an expression by heart, which I think you should probably memorize also. And here it is. Wiggle, type the word wiggle, lowercase. Begin parentheses. We'll type the number 12, a comma, and the value 25. End parentheses. This is an expression. What this is saying is instead of using this exact value for the position, I want you to wiggle the position or shake the position 12 times a second for a value of 25 units, so 25 pixels in this case. Now you don't have to really worry about how this is all set up, just if you type it exactly this way, all you have to know is that the first number is how many times per second and the second number is how much. So we can change this to one, so it'll move one time a second, 25 pixels, or we can change this to 10, so it'll move 10 times a second, and that's a lot of shaking for 25 pixels. Now to execute this or close the expression, just click outside the box, and now that expression is working, and the red numbers mean there's an expression applied to this parameter. Now, let's go ahead and preview this. So I'm gonna hit the preview button here, So, as you can see, the footage is kind of shaking, okay? Looks pretty good. I can now change this just by clicking inside of the box, and I can type something else, say 25 and 50. Now, this is gonna be crazy. I'm gonna hit play again. A lot of shake in there. Now, we can also do something like this, 0.25, and the number 250. Play that back. So now we have more of a smooth motion. And the wiggle parameter is kind of just a random generator. So this is one of my favorite expressions and you can see there are a lot of uses for it. Here is the problem. When I set this, that's it. I set it to five and 25 and my clip is going to shake the entire time. But what if I don't want that to happen? What if I want it to be static, and then when he falls on the ground, then have it shake? Well, to do that is gonna require a little bit more work, but it's pretty easy. With the layer selected, I'm gonna choose Effect, Expression Controls, Slider Control. Now, the slider control is just a controller. It doesn't actually affect anything in your footage, but it does have a slider control that allows you to change the value. 
So what we're going to do is try to integrate the slider control with our expression. So right now the expression says 5 times a second wiggle 25 pixels. Now what we're going to do is delete the 25 and set our cursor right after the comma. Now what we can do is click and drag the pick whip to a parameter. For example, if we link this to the slider control, it types in some code automatically. Now we can type it in ourself, effect, slider control, but it gets a little tricky and you may not put all the commas in the right place. So if you use the pick whip, the expression automatically writes itself for the value you're linking. So in this case, the slider value. So now, instead of the value 25, what we have now is a reference to the effect slider control slider value. In other words, this value is now being in place of the 25. Now, right now the value is set to zero, so if I click outside, nothing is gonna happen to our footage because five times a second, it's gonna wiggle zero. So what we want to do is change this value to 25 and now 5 times a second it's going to wiggle 25 times. So now if we look at the footage we're back to where we started from. The only difference is we have a slider control that we can now keyframe and animate. So I'll set the value to 0 and then I'll click on the stopwatch that sets a keyframe at 0. Then if I select the layer hold down shift and the letter U, I'll bring that slider control keyframe up and then I can line this up with his fall, move that first keyframe right there, go a couple of frames after that and turn the slider control up to you know 100 or so, 75. So now the footage is still when he falls down it starts shaking we can then turn it down to zero so that it starts shaking and then it slowly stops. Now let's go ahead and preview this. So I'll hit the uh, play forward. So we've created a nice camera shake effect using our great little expression. Now we do get a little bit of black around the edges so what we can do is scale up the layer a little bit and that way we don't see that. Also, for some more advanced tips on this effect, check out videocopilot.net. There's a good tutorial on creating an earthquake effect. So here is an expression that we've hooked up to a slider control. Now, some other ways to use expressions include alt-clicking on other parameters. So I'm going to alt-click on our opacity. And instead of typing anything, I'm going to take the pick whip and I'm going to link it to the slider control. So it types in the necessary script, I click away, and what this is doing is directly linking the opacity with the slider control. So all that means is whatever the slider is, whatever we keyframe this value to be, the opacity is going to do exactly the same thing. Now what's great about that is we can animate one parameter and link other parameters to that one parameter and so if we want to make a change we can change the one parameter and it updates for all of the other parameters. For example, now that these two values are linked, if I scrub through the animation you see we've keyframed the slider up to 73 and you can see the value changes. Now if you look at the opacity it also changes together. Now in this case, this isn't something we'd want to do. We wouldn't want the opacity to just kind of come in and fade out. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that expression. So I'm going to alt click on the stopwatch and that removes the expression. You can also click on this equal sign and that kind of puts a cross meaning don't use the expression. But we'll go ahead and turn that back on. Now what we're going to do is add an expression to the rotation value. But guess what? Our expression is already written. I'm going to use the same expression that I have on the position. So I'm going to select what I've typed, right click and choose copy. So I just copied this text. Then I'm going to alt click on the rotation, delete what's here, right click and choose paste. And so now 
I've copied my wiggle expression right into the rotation value. And remember, the wiggle is wiggling five times a second and whatever this slider control says. So watch what happens. It goes along, the camera starts to shake, and it also starts to rotate. But that's a lot of rotation. That cameraman is getting hurt. So we want to decrease that amount. But I've already set this slider control up. I don't want to bring the slider value down because if I do that, my wiggle for the position isn't going to be as much. So we're not going to be able to see the camera shake. So how can I change this rotation value without having to create a whole bunch of expressions for it? So what we can do instead is add a simple math equation to the end of the rotation. And I say equation loosely. What I'm going to type is divide, so the divide sign, right after this value, divide by 10. So whatever this value creates, divided by 10. So if it's 25, it'll be 2.5, and so on. So then I'm going to click away. And now our rotation value, if you look here, is, you know, maximum goes up to negative 1 or so. Now, if you want more, we'll just divide by 5. So now we have a little bit of rotation, as you can see in the project window. And say you want a little bit more, just make this number less. Divide by 2. And so now we have a little bit of rotation. I think, let's go divide it by 3. So we have a little bit of rotation along with our shake. Let's go and preview that. Not too bad. Now, say I want the rotation to happen faster than the position offset. Well, our wiggle expression says 5 times a second, wiggle this value divided by 3, essentially. Well. How about we change that to 12 times a second? So a lot more shaking. Same amount of shaking, just a lot more of it. Change it to 12, and I'm going to click away. Now let's preview this. So now the rotation is a little bit quicker. But instead, I'm going to reverse that. I'm going to set this back to 5. And then for my position, I'm going to set the number 5 to 12. So 12 times a second. It's going to offset itself, and it'll be a little bit quicker on the shake side. I'm going to go ahead and hit preview. Okay, so now we've created some cool shake, and we have it keyframed. And if I want to change this value, say I want to increase it. It's 25 right now at the high point. So we set that up to like 60. Preview it again. You can see the rotation is a lot stronger, and it's because all the expression is all linked in together. Now, isn't that amazing? Okay, well, you know, you can't impress everybody. Now, like I said, there's a lot of expressions out there that you should go investigate and do some research on. But the bottom line is when you hear expressions or scripting in After Effects, I don't want you to worry, and I don't want you to get scared because you can handle it. And in any of the tutorials at videocopilot.net, anytime I introduce you to a new expression, I'll usually explain it pretty well. Now, another thing I want to point out is right here, we're dividing by 3. But we can do other things like multiply times 2. So if you'd rather multiply, you can do that as well. Now, multiplying that rotation is going to be pretty drastic. But the bottom line is you can add simple little math equations and drive powerful effects. Anyway, that's, in a nutshell, expressions inside of After Effects. I hope you look into it, and I hope you, uh, you know, start using them every single day, because they will save you some time. All right, my name is Andrew Kramer, and thanks for watching.